Ben Cahill is one of the masterminds behind Yannick Sinner's historic Australian Open run. The Australian coach witnessed Sinner's triumph as he clinched his first Grand Slam victory. But success is not an unfamiliar sight for Cahill, who has led names like Andre Agassi and Simona Halep to Grand Slam glory. Regarded as one of tennis's greatest coaches, Cahill's prowess knows no bounds. But just how good is he? That's what we're about to unravel. Darren Cahill, and I'm one of the coaches of Yannick Sinner. Darren Cahill joined forces with Yannick Sinner in July 2022, and the partnership hit a monumental milestone recently, as the Italian won the Australian Open, with an amazing run that saw him reach the semifinals without losing a set. Sinner then stood across from Novak Djokovic, as the world number one had never been defeated once he made it to Melbourne's Final Four. But Sinner was a man on a mission who won dominantly by neutralizing Djokovic's serve and scoring five break points in the entire match while Djokovic scored none. Afterward, Djokovic was honest. He outplayed me completely today. An outstanding win from the Italian, but not a completely surprising one, as all of his three wins against the Serbian came after the beginning of his partnership with Darren Cahill. Despite the final being yet to be played, Darren Cahill did not hold back any praise on the player. Work ethic, purpose, desire, willingness to learn, and tennis IQ, Yannick has all that plus a sense of humor. He's a great person and a lover of fun. Win or lose, nothing changes in the team. We all enjoy it and that's fundamental. Then came the big one for Yannick Sinner. His first Grand Slam final and his opponent was none other than Danielle Medvedev, another player that the Italian had never beaten before being coached by Darren Cahill. But before the Aussie Open, Sinner had overcome his Russian counterpart four times, all in 2023, at the Beijing Open, Vienna Open, and Shanghai Masters, as well as the ATP Finals. Medvedev started on top, doing what Djokovic couldn't, and broke Sinner's service. The world number three took control of the set, and it was clear that the first one was going to him. As Darren Cahill shouted from the stands, desperate for his player to make a comeback, Medvedev went on to take a two-set lead and seemed poised to hand Sinner a major loss. But Sinner didn't settle, as even though his exhaustion was beginning to show, he managed to break Medvedev to win a hard-fought third set. The Russian was struggling with his ankle in the fourth as the slam took its toll on both players. A tight fourth set with break points from both sides ended with a dry volley from Sinner to then break his opponent and tie the match. The fifth set was dominated by Sinner, who broke an exhausted Medvedev three times to take his anticipated first Grand Slam trophy. Team, he, he has a lot of experience which helped us to, to handle the, the situation. The young Italian proved himself as a special player, but what made him so special in Melbourne? Darren Cahill weighed in and talked about a determined and ambitious player. Even the way he hits the ball, it just sounds special. When you hit the ball the way he does, when you want to improve the way he does, when you move the way he does, he's going to have success at some point. He'll never settle. He wants to get better. But how did Darren Cahill and Yannick Sinner start working together? My role's more about the experience together with Yannick. 2022 was a year of revolution for Sinner as he got two new coaches, Simone Vagnozzi in January and Darren Cahill in July. After Wimbledon, the Australian coach praised Sinner, showing signs of a great personal connection blooming between the two. He impressed me. He is humble, witty, well-educated, and full of passion for tennis. These are the most important human skills for me. Then he is the athlete whose qualities are there for all to see. In March 2023, Sinner pointed out that one of the major pros of working with the legendary coach was getting better at understanding his opponent. Sinner then admitted the importance Darren Cahill had in his mental game, making sure that the Italian kept having fun while playing tennis. The most important, he always says, be proud where you are and have fun when you play. From a technical standpoint, Yannick Sinner's biggest improvement while under Darren Cahill's wing has been his serve. In the past 12 months, the Italian won 88.8% .8 of his service games, a higher number than Djokovic's 86.9%. Cahill himself compared Sinner's serve to Nadal and Agassi's as the Italian even changed his position, now serving with his back heel elevated. But how good were Darren Cahill's former partnerships? With Darren, he's um, a great coach and a great person. Simona Halep is a major one. The two had an up-and-down partnership that started in 2015. Two years later, Halep would win the Madrid Open and be the runner-up at Roland Garros, losing in three sets to Yelena Ostapenko, but finishing the year as world number one. 
In 2018, the clay slam would not get away from her as the Romanian player made it to her third French Open final and defeated Sloane Stephens in a match that Darren Cahill acknowledges as her best, finishing the year as WTA number one once more. The Australian coach addressed their partnership in an interview. We had a roller coaster of emotions, some unbelievable moments in that time, but also a few tough ones with her and I having a few clashes on the court. Secondly, with having so many great moments and getting so close to winning a major, but not quite getting there, but I think the most important part is you grow from those moments. The most notable of these clashes took place in the 2017 Miami Open quarterfinals, from which Halep forfeited leading to an abrupt resignation from Cahill to spike the young player up. And it turned out to be a successful move as their partnership restarted just in time for that year's Roland Garros. Just like in Sinner's case, Halep's biggest achievement while under Cahill's tutelage was developing her mental game, going from a self-critic player to a more self-compassionate one, able to use her lows to grow as a player and a person. In 2017, after winning in Madrid, Halep said, He knows how to calm me down. I just try to learn how to relax myself and how to be dedicated to this sport, not to the result. Regarding Halep's doping allegations, the Aussie coach was consistent in defending his former player as someone who wouldn't intentionally take forbidden substances. Funnily enough, Cahill's coaching career started in a mental health challenging moment too. The year was 1994 and Cahill found himself as a retired player due to a knee injury. When knocking on his door, a 12-year-old Leighton Hewitt showed up, inviting Cahill to play tennis in the garden. During that game, the Australian coach realized Hewitt was truly special, and the kid would prove just that by becoming a U.S. Open winner and the youngest world number one ever in 2001. Ever wondered about the legendary figure in tennis history guided by none other than Darren Cahill? Back in 2002, Cahill teamed up with a seasoned 32-year-old Andre Agassi, opting out of a collaboration with the young Marat Safin. Together, they embarked on a remarkable journey, propelling Agassi to reclaim the world number one ranking, making him the oldest player to achieve this feat at that time in 2003. In that same year, Agassi won the Australian Open, which turned out to be his final Grand Slam trophy. The Americans stood across from Rainer Schuttler and got a straight set win. In 2020, the American addressed Cahill's role in this triumph. He was single-handedly responsible for the second half of my career being arguably better than my first half. He's as smart as they come regarding to tennis. He's as practical as they come regarding decision-making, and he's as loyal as they come regarding being a friend. Darren Cahill is a legendary coach, perhaps the greatest of all time. But does his player career live up to his coaching days? Cahill was a great tennis player, finding success both as a singles and doubles player. His best Grand Slam performance took place at the 1988 U.S. Open, defeating Boris Becker in a run that saw him reach the semis, where he lost to Mats Villander, who went on to win the tournament. Darren Cahill's highest world ranking was 22nd. In doubles, the Aussie had a near-victorious stint in his home slam as he paired up with Mark Kratzman, with the duo falling short to Rick Leach and Jim Pugh. Despite never winning a Grand Slam, he would make it to the ATP doubles top 10. Darren Cahill had a great career as a player, but his nearly 30-year-long coaching run is truly off the charts, as he's not only a coach to his players, but also a mentor, someone who helps them to improve not just physically, but also mentally. Whether it was Agassi, Halep, or Sinner, Cahill found a way to change their perspective on tennis. This is one of the main skills that make him not only a tennis great, but also one of the best sports coaches of all time.